Okay, guys, we're back this week um, on the Eclipse 2 class. Do y'all have any questions about what we talked about last week about block, uh, block files and stuff like that? Did y'all mess with that a little bit? Excellent. Glad y'all didn't. Uh, anyway, <laughs> guys, y'all got to start messing with that stuff, okay? Start, start messing with it, you know, a little bit or whatever. This week we're going to talk about form fields, okay? Form fields... are fill in the blanks, okay? And that's all they are. They're fill in the blank areas and scans that uh, that need to be filled in. So when you when you put in your title pages, your appearance pages, your witness page, your certificate page, it all has these blank fields in it where you go through and change it. So the witness isn't always gonna be the same, the style of the case isn't always gonna be the same, the date, all of that stuff isn't going to be the same, okay? So that's why you create these form fills, so you go in there and change it every time, okay? Let's see how Total Eclipse form fills make it easy to fill in the blanks for information that changes from transcript to transcript to transcript. There are several ways to begin filling in the blanks. You can click on a toolbar menu or go to the production menu or use speed key control E or hyper key E. Y'all got that? So it's control E if you're not in um, hyper keys and just E if you're in hyper keys. So it's always easier just to do it in hyper keys, okay? In this blank, I'll type in a number and pressing enter is okay. Blanks can be set to automatically adjust their size to accommodate your text. And to delete the entire line they're on if you leave the blank empty. So the line that was here was automatically deleted. Blanks can also be set to completely capitalize whatever text gets placed in them. And to look in a list file to give you choices. This, huh? Seriously? Yeah. I'm confused because I'm hitting control E and it's taking me down to the bottom. Is that because Because you I, don't have any fields. So I just need an alt R, bring them in, and then I can do all this control E stuff. No, I'm gonna show you I, I'm gonna show you how to create these little fields right here. So if you want to create something for it, we're gonna learn how to do that. Okay. okay? So just please pay attention. Write notes. I'm gonna back it up a little bit or go to the production menu, or use speed key control E, or hyper key E. In this blank, I'll type in a number, and pressing enter is okay. Blanks can be set to automatically adjust their size to accommodate your text. See, so what they're talking about and right to there... delete the entire line they're on if you leave the blank empty. So... Okay, so what they were talking about, I'm going to back it up a little bit. I don't know why this... To accommodate. See how it says auto adjust? So it adjusts to the line that you need it to. So it doesn't make it longer or shorter. And if it is shorter, then it doesn't move this thing way over here or whatever. So it, it, there's an auto adjust on it. Okay? So that parenthesis is supposed to be on the way out there? No matter well, it all depends. I mean, you know, this thing is here, so I don't know what they have here. So I'm, you know, it's probably lined up correctly the way that they have it right here because it, it's on an auto adjust so it's probably lined up correctly okay H your text and to delete the entire line they're on if you leave the blank empty so the okay so what they were saying right there is if you leave that blank leave the blank em if you leave this thing empty and you don't put anything in there then all it'll do is it's going to delete that line okay but if you put something in there, then it's going to put it in there. But if you don't put anything in there, it's going to delete that line because there's nothing in there. And it knows that there's nothing in there, so it's just going to delete that complete line. Even with the parenthetical thing? This? Yeah, I was yeah. confused. It's going to delete that whole line. So you don't have one even, you know. I just always thought you had to have a certain amount of those, whether you had text there or not. No. No, as long as it lines up correctly, then you're good. It doesn't matter how many lines there are. I mean, it's going to differ from, you know, uh, 
lawsuit to lawsuit. Because one, you're only, you know, it may be John Don Doe versus Sally Doe. So it's going to be John Doe v. Sally Doe. And then you're going to have all of these guys because it's a, you know, a class action suit. So you're going to have 15 plaintiffs. So it's going to change. It's going to change. So, I mean, you don't have to have so many lines. Well, I'm talking about the parent with parentheses. What about it? I thought they had to go down in a straight line, like one after They do, another. and they are. Well, I'm saying if you didn't have, or it deletes, if empty, it deletes the parent, the parentheses too? Yes, yeah. it deletes that whole line. No. It should delete that whole line. So the line that was here was automatically deleted. Blanks can also be set to completely capitalize whatever text gets placed in them and to look in a list file to give you choices. So what you can do is you create these little list files or whatever um, and you go into them and then you create these uh, you know, things. So when you take depositions of certain attorneys, then you have list files that you go into and you don't have to type their name every time it automatically comes up. All of their information comes up. Their name, the term attorney, who they work for, the, the firm that they work for, address, state bar number, all of that stuff is in there. Okay? This blank knows how I filled in the witness's name in other spots in my transcript. And it's prompting me in case that information has changed. You see what it's saying? So once you fill it in, the witness and it comes down and it has the witness again, it's automatically going to bring that name up saying, well, the first time you used the witness, it was Fido Doe. Okay? Is it going to be Fido Doe again? Yeah, it is. Okay. And if it's not, then you just start typing and it starts typing. Okay? But I'll just press OK. And finally, Form fields can make it quick and easy to insert client information. You see what it did right there? When you have client information already done, you don't have to type this whole thing in again. You already have the information in a form field, okay? So you don't have to do it every time. You put it in there one time and you create this form field, and then as, as you need him to come up and, take, and say he's one of your clients, Christopher Cilio is one of your clients, then all of a sudden, you know, you don't have to worry about putting that all of this information in every time. You already have it. And he does that by hitting the hyper key in order to fill in that. Well, it gives you an option. Oh. It gives you an option right there of what you want. So when, when you have this form field and you put a certain word in there or command in there, then it asks you, do, is this what you want to do? You want to go to the attorney list? Yes, I do. And then it, it opens up your attorney list. Okay. Rewind it just a bit. And finally, form fields can make it quick and easy to insert client information. Okay. Can you, like that box that just popped up. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Like, yeah. When you when you go in the form field, C to insert client. When you go in there and you push E on attorney, it automatically brings up your client attorney list. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where do we create that? We're, that's coming up. Relax. Ah, can't even get this and you want to jump to that. Client <laughs> information. Within these short presentations, it's not possible to show all that form fields can do. So a separate in-depth ePower video tutorial is available on form fields and automatic indexing. Got it? That little part? Yeah, I understand the concept, but I really don't understand it. And I'm 
me. I don't even know how you how they got. Well, we're to that we're going to get to that. We're going to get to on how to create the form field. Okay. 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 So when we discuss block functions, you had occasion to use block files, which is the Alt R, okay? To insert the text of block files with the parentheticals like discussion off the record, lunch recess, and we talked about that too. Remember? Going into chambers, so putting all of that stuff in, your title pages. And now they're going to show you on how to use more elaborate block files, okay? We're about to look at the first part of a block file for the cover pages, for the for the deposition on a trial transcript. Each item that appears in pale blue is a form field. So that's what this is called. Okay? It's called a form field. Okay? Hyperkey E or just E, I mean hyperkey E or control E allows you to get into these form fields and change them to whatever you need to. Okay? Here what they're talking about is, is you can skip a form field and come back to it by using the next button, okay? Um, you know, and that's when the box opens and it gives you okay or next, back, whatever. That's what they're talking about right there. So hitting okay will delete it because it'll be blank. Yeah. And hitting next lets you go back. Yeah, it lets you go back and doesn't delete it, okay? This, I think, is where they tell you about creating the form fields. Let's see how AutoMagic works with form fields and the fill-in-the-blanks process. The choices offered in relation to form fields are perfect examples of how AutoMagic helps both new and long-time users of Eclipse. So when your cursor is resting on a form field, the triple scan would fill just that one field. That would be speed key control T or hyper key T. In contrast, you might want to fill in all blanks. That would be hyper key E or speak key control E. You understand what it's telling you there? Yeah. No, I understand. Okay. T is going to allow you to fill in that one. E is going to allow you to fill in all the blanks. Okay, so once you come to this blank and fill it in, then it's automatically going to go to the next one, the next one, the next one, as long as you keep doing E. If you just want to fill in the one, fill in this field, then you just push T in hyperkeys. Okay? Got it? Are you sure? Yes, you do, or no, you don't? I mean, yes, I understand. Okay. If you don't, say something, guys, because once we go on... I'm just confused as to how do they get this. Like, okay, so my brain is working from start to finish. To me, I feel like I'm starting in the middle of something. I have no idea how they got to that, and that's what I'm stuck. Like I know don't, that you're don't saying, worry about this just yet. Yeah, it's not okay. that big of a deal. It's not that we're we're going to show you. They're going to show you how to do it. But I I don't want to jump forward because I don't want to miss something. And this is the way that they put it in line. So just relax. If we have to come back to it, then we'll come back to it. If y'all don't understand, once we create the fields, okay? The long-time users of Eclipse may not have been aware of the distinction between the ability to fill in just one blank and the ability to go through the documents filling in all blanks. AutoMagic also makes it very easy to modify a field. So here, if I press 3, that would open the dialog where I can change the properties of this field. Maybe I want to give it a different name or use a different variable so that the information I place in one field will be remembered in a similar field somewhere else. You see what it's telling you there? So that's how you go through and change it. 
Okay, so if you want to just change the name, you put witness and it was supposed to be attorney, then that's how you do it. Okay, modify field. Maybe I want to use a different file that would offer a list of choices. Or if this field was on a billing page or a certificate page, perhaps I'd want to insert a formula that would calculate the number of pages in the document and perhaps the taxable cost. The choice to delete a form field is pretty self-explanatory, but what about job variables? If I press 5 here, it opens the dialog that stores the information that Eclipse is learning as I'm filling in the blanks. So if I perhaps made a mistake in spelling the witness's name, I could correct that spelling before it's used to fill in other blanks in the transcript. You see what it's telling you right there? So say you misspelled this name, and it's supposed to be S-M-I-T-H-E, and you spelled it S-M-I-T-H, then that's how you go through and, and change it, is through job variables, and it allows you to go through and change the name. What is the P and the W for? Um, Witness, uh, I can't remember what it was. I know that's witness. Uh, proceeding, what kind of proceeding was it? Was it a trial? Was it a motion to enforce? Was it a motion to suppress? So that's what the P is for, is proceeding, okay? For more information, check out the other visualizers that are devoted to form fields and the fill in the blanks process. All right. I don't understand the whole job variables. Because I opened it. The job variables? It's a blank box. Well, because you don't have anything in there. You haven't done anything. So what you do is the first time that you go to, say you, you put your title pages and everything in there, and the first time you go to witness, you put John R. Smith in there. Well, now you open that box. Now it's going to have W because that's where the witness is and that's who those people are. So you don't have any anything in those fields right now in that job, that's why there's nothing in there, okay? So as you, as you put things in there under the proceedings, under the date, under the witness, then it starts remembering all that information. For a witness, you just put their last name or you put their first and last name? You put it on how you get the deposition, like you get the deposition notice and it says John R. Smith, then that's how you put it on there. John R. Smith. Okay, and if y'all are in there, then y'all can go into here. I think we've done this before, okay? And come into here, and then just push E, and it takes you to the first one. You see how it does that? Or you can come up here, and if you do T, then it just goes to that one. And it's just gonna fill in that one blank, and it's not gonna keep going, okay? You see how it did it? Yeah, so, but I would still have to go back to the first when I messed it up without any, you go fix it. Because it only fixes the ones after that. It's not going to fix the first one. Yeah. Okay, so T and E on that. T is for one to fill in one blank. E goes, keeps going to the next one. It doesn't even ask you. So once you fill in this blank, it's automatically going to come here. Okay? But if it does and, and you've already filled it in, then all you have to do is escape and you're good. Don't, you know, because if you push OK, then it's just going to go to the next one and the next one and the next one. So it's just going to keep going. So unless you exit out, it's not going to, you know, it's just going to keep going.
All right, any questions about that, form fills? Spell check, I don't think we need to go through that. I'm not gonna waste time going through spell check. You guys know how to do that, right? So form fills is just to understand that when once we create the form. The form itself. The form itself, all we have to do is either use hyper key or hyper key T. T, yeah. And that's all we have to use, and that's then all. we'll go from there. Yeah, okay. that's it. Do y'all need me to go through spell check? Oh, Alt S. Alt S. Or you do the spell check thing up here. And it doesn't show it up here because I'm in the tutorial. But it has a little, there's a little icon up here. Look, guys. There's a little icon up here that says spell check. Okay? I don't know whether y'all's has it or not. Does it? Yeah. Use it. Use it. Okay? I mean, every, you know, just when you think, oh, you know, I got this, and then, oh, and, you know, I got it right, just check it. You know, it takes just a second just to check it, so it's worth it. All right, now we're going to go to indexing. Let's see how automatic indexing is possible with Total Eclipse. Total Eclipse. Eclipse automatic indexing can handle an unlimited number of categories of information. Guys, this I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time with because it is a very, very, very complicated and extremely confusing thing. I don't even use it, okay? I had um, Chris Pogue come and speak about it and some of the students didn't even understand it. So when you use the auto indexing, that might be something that you take after you get out of school, okay? And go take a, uh, yeah, at one of the Eclipse and take, take it just on this, okay? The rest of the stuff I can teach you. The auto indexing, very confusing, very hard, okay? If you want to, we can go through it. I'll let you look at the visualizers or whatever and I mean, we can go through it and, and listen to it, but I'm telling you this stuff and getting everything right, making sure that everything's correct, even if it's you know page 10 instead of 173 and the lines mat, you know, match up, it's really confusing and hard. So it, this is a class that you may need to take after you get out of school, okay? But I'll, I'll play the visualizer anyway. But in this example, we have an index of examinations and an index of exhibits. I've prepared several short block files that Eclipse uses as headings to introduce the information that it automatically collects. I've also set up several paragraphs to format the information in different sections of my index. And I've added index lines to a few of my block files, like the sworn file, which is set up to get the name of the witness See, and it brings up lines like this, like when you bring up like direct examination, and we'll do that later, cross-examination, it brings up these lines right here, and it has conditional page break for index witness, bold. I couldn't tell you what those things are for the life of me, and I don't use them. I really don't, and it's really confusing. So, you know, like I said, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think we're going to spend much time on this. This is something that's... Uh, it's way beyond me. So we'll just kind of move on from that. And if you want to, I can have Chris, you know, come one week and, and try to explain it to you all. But I think it's just, you're going to sit here all night just going. And that's what the students did the first time that I taught the Eclipse too, was it was way above their head and they just, they didn't get it either. But. You let me know what Eclipse print to do. commands include such things as page breaks and comment lines, breaks and comment lines. For a nice clean screen, you can have these pop in and out of view, or if you prefer, remain visible at all times. Here I've highlighted several print commands, and you're seeing them because my cursor is actually on one of them. When I move my cursor the print commands will hide themselves and you'll once again see the text box. Okay, this is like on a page break. Get into a job where um, you know that you can mess up. You can mess with it a little bit. Okay, go down a few lines right there. Okay, 
being right there by um, the crime. Put your person there. And do Alt N. Get on a, get on a, like a beginning. See where that page break is? You see where it is? Did it come up? Press OK. See where that page break is? Now move your cursor up. Yeah. Yeah. See, so now the page break doesn't show anymore. But if you go, go all the way up. Now, now go arrow right. See how it goes? to the page break. So that's what they're talking about right now. Okay? So it doesn't when you print that, when you print that, it doesn't show that page break. Okay? It just shows it there on the screen, but it doesn't print. So I mean if you need to um, say they have a cross examination. You never start a cross examination on line 24, 25. You always start it cross examination by Mr. So-and-so, question. All of that needs to be on the same page. So you do the page break and goes on to the next page? Yeah. Oh. Well, you can, you can do a page break or you just do Shift F5 and it'll make a, a conditional page break. So right here, right there, do Control Y on the page break. See how it takes it back? So now the page break isn't there anymore. So it's like deleting a line. It's like control Y to delete a line. Where's, the, where's your control? I mean, where's your page break? Did you already take it out? I don't know I'll show you a different page. So if, if it's on the page break, then it's going to be on a totally separate page. It's going to. It's going to. Just go down. Got that? No. I'm creating a page break? I didn't, I didn't see what it did. This does was already on the page on its own. Well, then it's going to take it to another page. It's already on its own. Hmm? Was it does already right here? Now it's on page seven. It was okay. on page six. Oh. Now it's on page seven. Control Y. See? Now do all gen. Question. I have a question. See, and you can do all those. No, don't, don't do that. Control Y. All gen. See, and it does all those things. You can put a header, footer, you get an excerpt, all of those things. What's that? I, just, I had a quick question. You know, so of course when you enter, I just picked anywhere and I picked the page right mm -hmm. here, and it just doesn't it doesn't show you the rest of the page. Is that the purpose of this? Well, and because it, it broke the page up and it put it on a different page. Okay. So now it took it instead of from line 25. It's on line now. It's only on 18. It created a page break. So now everything that was below that is on page two. Now take the page break out. And that's my control Y. Yeah. Oh. And then all you have to do is just go up and delete those lines. Delete line 19 and 20. Okay. And do control J. Control J? Yeah. Well, join. Oh, right. And join. Oh. Okay? Did Wait. you see that? 
but it'll print out the numbers one through twenty five and then the next page will be wherever I Yeah, but it's gonna break it like it like say, you know, you do a page break right here. Okay, now now you have just page three and then nothing else down here. Right. Well it's still gonna print out all twenty five pages, but it's only gonna print out page three where it has text. It's still gonna print out the whole page. That's what I'm like yeah. asking, like the numbers will show one. Yeah, the, the numbers are still gonna show, but there's only gonna be text on page three. So if you ever go and you print a job and it's like, oh my God, uh, Mr. Jefferson, and then this all went down, you know, from line th from line four all the way down, went to page 11, because you were on page 10, and it's like, what the heck happened? You probably had a page break. That's what it was. So you just need to go in here, on line four, arrow right, and it'll take you to the next thing and delete that page break. So if it ever happens, and you'll, you'll find that it happens when you do your uh, title pages and stuff like that sometimes, okay? You have a choice. You can have the print commands visible at all times or automatically hidden whenever your cursor is not resting on one of them. Use the toolbar icon or the menus or speed key alt key. See, and it's telling you that. So if you want those things, and you usually do, you want to know that there's a page break there. So you want them to come up on your page, okay? But it's for you only, okay? So when you print it, it's not gonna show up on the page. It's, it's for your view only. Once you print it, then it's gone, okay? And they're gonna tell you how to change it and it's through um, your user settings. You to go to the display section of your user settings. If you want the print commands visible at all times, Put a check in the box next to print commands. And go into that right now, okay? So you need to go into, because you want this to change throughout your whole document. So get out of that job and go to the main page of the Eclipse. Okay? Go into your user settings, go into display, print commands, and check it. That says that you want the print commands visible. Did you do it, Slick? Yeah, but I don't know if I want to do that. Why? Because I'm going to see all that stuff all the time, right? You're just going to see it on your page. It's not going to print. But you want to know that it's there. Because if you don't know that it's there, then you're not going to know that it's there, you know? So you almost, you almost do want it, I'm telling you. If you want the print commands visible at all times, put a check in the box next to print commands. And if you want the print commands automatically hidden whenever you're not on one of them, remove the check. And that's probably better. I'm, I'm sorry guys, I got a little bit confused. What you want is it unchecked. You want it unchecked because you don't want it, I don't, I don't like that it's there. Okay, when I, when I cursor down on it, then it shows then you know that it's there. It does help you by having it there sometimes because if there's a page break, then you automatically see it. It's like, you know, and sometimes you'll go through it and it just keeps going. Well, you don't see that there was a, a line difference or a page difference or whatever. So, you know, you just skip right past it. By having that checked on the print commands, you would have known that the, that the, you know, page break was there. Does that make sense? It took away your, your boxes? Yeah, like the black boxes around it. Okay, because it probably, that's what it's telling you. It's print, that's a print command, okay? You don't need it to edit. You don't need to know that there's a box there to edit. So that's what it's doing. It's taking the box away, but it's still going to print that box. But it's not showing you it on the page, okay? So why wouldn't we want to? Well, some people just don't like looking at it. I like looking at what I'm going to print, what's going to print. So I leave it unchecked. I leave it unchecked because I like knowing that my box is there, etc. Okay? So leave it unchecked. You can mess with it a little bit, kind of see what it does or whatever, and however you like it, you can do it however you want. Okay?
Any questions? Here are two display-related speed keys worth remembering. Shift Control F10 quickly switches from showing your print commands at all times to hiding them automatically. You see what it's telling you right there? So you don't have to go in your user settings. You can do that Control Shift F10 and do it like that. That's all it's telling you right there. Whereas Shift Control F12 just puts a number of display options at your fingertips. Any questions about that? Okay, the reason I'm kind of skipping it through a lot of this, one, is the exercise that you can go through and mess around with. So you can kind of go through and mess around. And the other stuff, they were talking about the uh, setting up the, the auto, automatic, the auto indexing, which we didn't go through. Okay, any questions about the indexing? Not real, you know, in-depth or whatever, unless you're going to use that auto-indexing, which is really confusing. So, I mean, if you're going to go through that, and that's really what that was more about. So now printing and backup. Okay, we all know printing is what? Alt O. Alt O is printing, okay? And if you want to move stuff around, it's what? How do you get to your file manager? to print with Total Eclipse. Eclipse. Within Eclipse, the option to print will be grayed out if you don't have a document open. However, you don't have to open Eclipse just to print up an entire document. Wherever you see an Eclipse transcript icon, perhaps on the recent documents list, or some shortcut that you created, you can right-click to open a context menu and select Print to just print up the entire document. By default, Total Eclipse presumes to print your entire document. Although you can use the current button if you only want to print the page where your cursor is currently located. If you see what it's telling you there? And you can always pick the page. We, this is stuff we went through like the first class, okay? You know, and it's real simple. So, I mean, you can always change that number. You can do the current, which is where it's, you know, add or whatever, so. If your file is containing several volumes, you can print specific volumes or print specific pages within a single volume. Draft printing. And you see what they were doing right there? So you can do one through five, put in the comma 30, only prints 30. It doesn't do 30 through 53. So by putting the comma, and we've gone over that, right? Y'all know how to do that? 
And then once you do 53 dash, select, once you do the 53 dash, that means to the end. Just that little dash right there means to the end. But if you just put 53, then it's only gonna print page 53, okay? But by putting that little dash right there, means go to the end, okay? ...is also available. This would omit your text box and footer, but it would include comment lines, so it's a way for a scopist and reporter to print out the messages they might be exchanging. A draft printout can also include a watermark that might have the text draft or do not copy, but remember that your watermark... You see what the, the watermark is? The watermark is the little thing on the page that says that it's a draft, that it's a copy, original. That's crazy that they're actually, okay, so, how do we get there? What? Yeah, that's um, cause I, that's this interesting that. <laughs> it's all been important. So it's a way for Scopus. Right there where it says watermark. So in the print mode, where it says watermark, that's where, okay? And when you click this, oh, it's going to omit the, the text box. Oh, so I won't see it on my computer. I only see it when it's yeah. my watermark. Yeah. Okay. And, That's you know, if you just want to do a draft and you don't want to waste all that ink putting the box around the whole thing or whatever, you can do that. You can check that draft and it's going to take out the box. I don't even know how to get the box. What do you mean? You know the box? Your yeah. Border, it never prints out with borders. Even when I scan it as a PDF, it's supposed to come out the way it is supposed to be set up on clips. It never comes out with the box. Really? Yep. We'll have to check that. And reporter to print out the messages they might be exchanging. A draft printout can also include a watermark that might have the text draft or do not copy. But remember that your watermark text will only appear if the darkness is set above zero. Choose the darkness that works best for you. Here's a page from the final version of a transcript. Here's a draft version of that same page. The text box and the footer have been omitted. And here's the, choose the darkness that works best for you. What's the best here's a page from the- What's the what? What's the, is there a certain darkness? For the watermark, like is there 10%, 20%? It, it doesn't. I mean, you'll have to mess with it a little bit and kind of see. It's, it's kind of per personal preference. I don't really use those watermarks. I'll be honest with you. I've never used them. I, I had a stamp back in the day, and now what they do is they do the electronic um, signature. So, I mean, we don't even have to use that anymore. But what if it's a rough draft? That's, what, that's the whole purpose of the watermark was to show that it's a rough draft. No, I mean, it's just for you. If it's a rough draft, then it's just for you. Or if they just want a rough draft, then you can. Then you can go through there and give it to them. So say they, they come in and they say, you know what, I want a rough draft of that thing that you took right now. You know, I want to be able to take it tonight. You know, whatever. Okay. Well, if you can hook up to a printer somewhere, you're at your printer, then that's how you would do it. I'm just asking because it's in the UFM. It talks about if it's a rough draft, you put it on colored paper, or you have a little, the little, almost, I thought it was a watermark. I could be wrong. Yeah. That's what it said. That you're supposed to have saying that this is an unedited version. Yeah. Unedited rough draft. So is it either or? Like if I don't use a watermark and then I print it on colored paper? Yeah, because it talks about colored paper. That we're supposed to put I mean, I, I've never paper. used the colored paper, but I don't give anybody a rough draft either. No. I've never, I've never given anybody a rough draft, so I have no idea. But the night that I bring the other court reporters to come in to kind of do some dictation, this would be a good question to ask them. Yeah, so don't write it down. Don't write it down. Just hopefully you'll remember. Apple. Write it down. <laughs> <laughs> write it down. I mean, and on a separate piece of paper where you know, you know what questions to ask, you can ask about auto, auto indexing, rough draft, all of that stuff, okay? So when they come in. I'm going to write it down. Oh, gosh, okay. Yeah, I don't mind. It's like I'm talking to myself. Hopefully I'll remember that night. Final version of a transcript. 
Here's a draft version of that same page. The text box and the footer have been omitted, and here's the draft version using a watermark. Now in page. The text box and the footer have been omitted, and here's the draft version using a watermark. Okay, and that's a watermark. See that? Where it says draft? I've never used it, so. There, my question is right. Good. At least one of you hopefully remember. All right, PDF. Let's see how to create PDF files with Total Eclipse. Total Eclipse. The Total Eclipse manual is provided in paperless form. The Adobe Acrobat PDF format has become a standard for paperless distribution of documents via email or the internet. You understand what it's telling you? So when you send a file to somebody, you always want to send it in a PDF file. Okay? Select. Yes. You always want to send it in a PDF file. And they're going to, they're going to tell you how to create a PDF file. However, you do not need to buy Adobe Acrobat in order to create PDF files for clients who request them. The Eclipse installation disk includes a free program called Qt PDF. And if you need to provide PDF files that are digitally signed, you can upgrade to that are digitally signed, you can upgrade to Qt PDF Professional for a modest fee. However, presuming Qt PDF has been installed on your computer, here's how to use it. Open the document. Okay. And you can download it. We've talked about this. Okay, all you do is go on Google. Do you have, do y'all have the cute PDF already? Yeah. Okay. Well, for those of that are watching the video or whatever, all you do is Google it. Cute PDF, click it, go onto it, install it on your computer, and it should automatically go into your printer, into your print mode. Okay? That, that easy, that quick, pretty easy. That will be the basis of your PDF file and begin as if you were going to print to paper. At the print dialog, use the setup button and drop down the list of printers that are available on your computer. Then select Qt PDF Writer. When you finish selecting Qt PDF as your printer, hit OK and continue. You see what it's telling me? So when it comes up, and let's see if let's see if I can do it from here. Let's see if it'll. No, it's not going to allow me to do it. Okay. Let me go, let me back up a little the bit. The setup button. Okay, so what you're going to do is come to the setup button right here. So once you go into print mode and do it right now, go into Alto. Are you in a, in a document? But I know how to do this. I do this all the time. I don't mind. I if do I, If you ever come to me and tell me you, how do I do a okay. PDF, you're getting smacked with a stick. I know how to do this. So what it's going to do is once you go into Alto, it's going to bring up the printer right here, your printer. Well, you know what? I want to create a PDF file. So you go to Setup, okay? And drop down the list of printers. And then you drop down the list of printers right here. So you go to this little arrow and it's going to drop down all of your printers that you have. I have three different printers, so that's where it comes up. Printers that are available on your computer. Then select. And then you just go in there, select Qt PDF. Qt PDF Writer. When you finish selecting Qt PDF as your printer, hit OK and continue printing as you normally would. You'll be able to save the document wherever you want. So when it comes up, and I'll show you guys here in just a bit. I'm gonna, once, we, once we get out of this thing, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Have y'all created a PDF file? You have? Have you? Okay. I'm going to show you what it looks like. The PDF format is inherently richer than an ASCII. You notice the text box and italics and bold print all show up. And it's quite easy to create. All you have to do is go to the print dialog and use the setup button to select Qt PDF instead of your normal paper printer. Okay, you're right here. You want to print the thing? Alt O. You want to create a PDF file, I'm sorry. You go to Alt L. So now it's going to show you all of your printers. 
Okay? Well, I don't want that one. Go to setup, come here, cute PDF, okay. Now you have it, it's gonna go on a cute PDF, you push okay, whoops. Okay, and that's what it comes up. So that's what it's gonna tell you it is, okay? Now if you wanna rename it, rename it. But once it goes in there, it's gonna ask you where you wanna put it. Usually you always want to put it in your documents. So make sure it's in your documents. If not, then you bring this little thing down and you can put it wherever you want, okay? So if you want to you know, put it wherever, say you want to put it on your um, thumb drive. Select your thumb drive, put it in there, okay? Without putting it in my documents. I always put it in my documents because I want it in another place where it's stored. So I always have it someplace else. Okay, on a PDF, ready to go. Okay, does that make sense? So you're hitting print, but you're not gonna print an actual copy. No, you're creating a PDF file. And then once you do that, where does it go? That's what I'm telling you, it goes to my documents. It's gonna go to my documents. So is this your printer? Like this is your little printer? Okay. So you've already done this? I'm going to go off for just a second. 